Hello, this is Jeffrey Schmidt at Jeffrey Schmidt Music, and I'm going to get into a new My Experience video. This is My Experience with the Yamaha AG03. As usual, I'm going to put chapter markers in the comment section, and if I get around to it, maybe in the description as well. So, I've been using this little audio interface with pleasure. I just want to share it with you um, because for the price of a cheap audio interface you get not only an audio interface but you also get a small mixer that can be used for example not only to record at home but to record and mix yourself at a gig if you're a solo artist like I am and you play guitar and sing or you play keyboards and sing second channel has a can be either used for guitar or for stereo a stereo keyboard input um, and so all that you can do with this one device you have full mixing capability both between monitors and output headphones you have tons of input and output options, which I'll go over over the course of this video. You get, um, it doesn't come with it, but I'm looking here. You can buy a Yamaha BMS-10A to put this little mixer on a microphone stand, which is the way I have it around my house, which is really practical both at a gig or at home particularly if you perform or you work standing up, as I often do. So this thing is just great bang for the buck. Um, in terms of quality of the preamps, I think it's pretty on par with what I've seen for cheap audio interfaces. It's not amazing. It's not terrible either. Um, if you plan on using some of the heavy-duty dynamic microphones like the Shure SMB or the Electro Voice RE20, I would recommend that you get something more expensive that has more powerful preamps. However, I use this uh, audio interface or mixer um, all the time. Uh, if you get dynamic microphones that have a higher output, like I often use this mixer with uh, either my Beta, my Shure Beta 58 or Shure Beta 57 microphones. When I want to make a sketch around the house but I don't feel like being uh, tied up into my studio or maybe uh, I'm on the go or something like that and I don't have all my gear with me, then uh, the preamps in this work very well for that purpose. Again, it's not heavy duty. Don't ask it to do what it's not supposed to do. None of the uh, entry level audio interfaces are going to correctly power the Shure SMB. Shure SM7B for you or the uh, Electro Voice RE20. Um, so let's go over all of the different features now because there are quite a few like I said it's really great bang for the buck we have a microphone input which can be powered with 48 volts you got even which is kinda nice you got this full length slider that you can use to control the volume in addition to this uh, they call it peak here but basically you have a, a slider and a trim control both dedicated to the microphone which is nice um, there are some effects I'll get to that a little bit after on the second channel well also I, I've never used it but it is nice that you have actually a pad here so that if you wanted to uh, record like percussion which can get really loud. You have the possibility of padding the microphone on the input. Um, on the second channel, you can either record a 
mono instrument like a guitar or a bass, or um, a stereo line source like a keyboard. And you have a selector for that here. You also have a gain selector, high or low, so that uh, you can play around with that if you have you know, act active or passive pickups on your guitar, or maybe your, uh, your keyboard comes in a little higher or lower than you would expect. So you have a higher or low gain button in addition to a normal input knob here for the second channel to decide how high the level is coming out of your second channel, which can either be mono or stereo, which is the reason they say two or three here, basically. So those are your inputs. In addition to potentially using an auxiliary input from your phone or MP3 player, so that is even a third input source. If, for example, you want to play a gig and you use backing tracks, you have that possibility here. Um, a, another source of input, which uh, is not separate from the first input. So if you, if you do um, um, podcasting, this is a good interface for that as well, because you can plug in your mini jack mic here and your mini jack headphones here. And uh, one of the great features of this audio interface is that it has a loopback function, which is perfect for podcasting so that you can use this little mixer to mix in sound effects or, uh, you know, any external sources of audio that you want to bring into your podcasting show. Um, I'm going to continue with the mixer functions for the moment. And we have lots of outputs here, which is very nice. You have headphone out with a normal size stereo jack, which you can use in addition to, of course, the mini jack headphones here. You have speaker outs. And we also have RCA outs. Now, part of the reason that I initially bought this was because um, a lot of my amps, some of them are not so recent. They tend to have auxiliary ins that are RCA. So, um, this interface is nice for that. So that, for example, on one of my acoustic amps that I use live, I have four inputs, but I also wanted uh, an additional input in certain circumstances and so this allowed me to bring in an additional microphone and even an additional guitar or keyboard if I wanted and just patch in the RCA outs of this into the uh, RCA ins of that other amplifier that I often use live. And then you have separate mixing capability for your monitors, which are here, output speakers. Uh, if you're using this with powered speakers live, right, you could just use this with powered speakers and do a concert that way. Um, and separate volume control for the headphones. You even have a monitor mute here if you want to mute the speakers. Um, and then it is an audio interface, as I mentioned. It allows you, as many modern audio interfaces do, to record at 24 bits and 192 kilohertz max, which is cool, very nice. And you have a volume knob here for what comes in from your computer if you're using it as an audio interface either for music recording or podcasting or whatever. So it's a really very complete little audio interface. And just to add even more 
value. I don't think it's very important, important personally, but it is a little bit nice that you have additional effects that can be added to uh, both the first channel and the second channel. Now you can't really um, modify these effects very well on the fly. You can just turn them on and off with these buttons. But using Yamaha's software, you can, when you're uh, connected to your PC, you can modify the effects to your liking while you're at your PC testing it out and everything. For example, if you use these effects for a live show. And then once you have them uh, tweaked to the way you like it, it'll be saved that way and whenever you turn them on, they'll come up the same way. So uh, obviously if they had included effects that were fully tweakable, this device would be much larger and the cost would have gone up. You would have had to put much more knobs on it. And this is a way to add a little bit of extra value, but keeping it small. So, um, I think we've been over, over all the features. And like I said, it's just a great bang for the buck for recording wherever you want to go or for recording uh, a concert for producing, uh, you know, a little, uh, a little concert for a one of a you know one man show type concert. It's great. Also, I want to just look back here because we have uh, you can power it with USB. Now it is a USB 2.0 uh, interface, so you got to be watch out for that since a lot of PCs these days, some of them might not even have USB 2.0 ports anymore, so watch out for that. And if you want to use it without a PC, we have a 5 volt DC input here to power the device using typical USB adapter type power. So it is, it is nice, it is kind of a lower power device and you can power it using uh, USB power either from an outlet or from your PC. And uh, they do mention that if you are using a tablet, usually the tablet does not have uh, sufficient USB power to power it using the standard USB cable that you would use to connect to your tablet if you're using it as an audio interface to record. And so in that case you would also want to power it using a different DC USB power source. So just keep that in mind. Also, uh, if you want to have two microphone inputs, there is also the AG06 mixing console, which will cost you a little bit more. Uh, in some ways I would have liked to had taken that device because it is nice to be able to have to be you know be able to record with two microphones at the same time on the other hand the inputs and outputs are a little bit different and it does not have RCA outs on the AG06 so make sure you look carefully at your application if you're shopping for a cheaper audio interface and you're looking at the AG03 and the AG06 uh, the AG06 is not an upgrade in all ways. For example, like I said, it is it does not have RCA outs, which is the reason that I got the AG03 instead, because I wanted to have that, like I said, for some of my amplifiers that have that require RCA auxiliary inputs. So there you have it. Like I said, if you're looking for a cheap audio interface that also doubles as a mixer, which most of them don't, for the same price as many of the other cheap audio interfaces, 
the drivers, uh, I've used it both on uh, Windows 8 and Windows 10. They've been perfectly stable for me. No problems with the drivers, which can sometimes be an issue with some of the cheaper, the cheaper audio interfaces as well. Yamaha, of course, is a fairly quality brand. And uh, I have a couple other Yamaha devices. None of them have ever failed me, and this one has, hasn't failed me yet either. So cross our fingers. I think that's all I have to say on this one. Cheers, guys. Like, subscribe, and comment, or ask a question if you have any questions to ask, and I'll get back to you. Bye-bye.